Every day in Europe, more than 28,000 flights are operated by more than 4,700 commercial planes. Millions of passengers are transported like this every day. It is forecast that the number of daily flights will double by 2030, giving 20 million 400,000 flights per year. Unfortunately, as it's managed today, European airspace has reached its limits. This situation has increasing economic impact, both for passengers and for airspace users. The environment also suffers greatly. This is why the management of European air traffic must be modernized. This is the challenge taken up by the European Commission in launching the single European sky with Caesar as a technology component. The European Community and Eurocontrol have thus joined forces to found the Caesar Joint Undertaking. The Caesar Joint Undertaking is a unique and ambitious public-private partnership which aims at modernizing the air traffic management infrastructure in Europe. To assess what's at stake in this modernization, let's look at how European air traffic is managed today. Eric Plateau is getting ready to fly from Stockholm to Brussels. One of the main problems of the air traffic management today is its fragmentation. I'm going to take a flight to Brussels and we are not going to use the shortest route to get there. What route is taken by an airliner? One hour earlier, the crew of flight SAS 589 arrived at the crew base of the airport. It's here that the SAS pilots work out their flight plans. I'll stand there by the coast. That's okay. Yeah, okay, okay, that's right. Sure. Cool. Here is the flight path Stockholm Brussels. The start of the route is fairly direct, but the plane then deviates from the straight line by executing a number of detours to avoid airspace that's very congested or is off limits. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and very welcome on board the Scandinavian Airlines and Star Alliance flight bound for Brussels. During this two-hour, 20-minute flight, the plane will be handled by five different air traffic control systems using different technologies. Over time, Caesar will do away with this fragmentation by standardizing and modernizing systems that are now becoming obsolete. The system is very manual. Uh, as you've heard, the system is only connected today via a radio between the air and the ground, basically a radio that was invented in the 1920s. The radio is also a potential source of error. We have to listen up on the frequency and even if uh, just 5% of the calls uh, is intended for us, we listen up anyway. Uh, it increases the risk for, uh, of missing uh, calls for us. Eurocontrol Center, Maastricht. It's here that the CPDLC is tested, the first component of the data link communications that CESA will develop. This is uh, electronic message which we can produce on the ground. It's very standardized messages, and this will be transmitted through the air onto the display of the cockpit. If the pilot wants to request a change of course, no further need for radio contact. He enters his request in the onboard terminal, and the air traffic controller sends him the answer by text message. In future, more and more communications will be done digitally. Today's situation, the, the flight is basically only known to the pilot because he's flying his aircraft. The information he's got on board in his computer is not available to the rest of the actors of the system. Tomorrow, his information will be as available as any other information regarding that flight, which basically mean that without him asking for it, the rest will play along and do as much as they can to make an efficient flight out of that one that he's flying in the sky today. This information sharing will make it possible to predict trajectories more efficiently, so the air traffic controllers will be able to use more direct routes and also make the capacity of the various air corridors more productive. For the airports, it's also an opportunity to anticipate flight arrivals better and to prepare ground services. For the passengers, the benefits of this defragmentation of airspace will also be significant. For example, our flight from Stockholm to Brussels. With a less fragmented flight, we could gain between 12 and 20 minutes on one flight. This shorter flight duration represents an economy of fuel of 400 to 700 kilos and a reduction in CO2 emissions of the order of 1,300 to 2,300 tons on this particular flight. Over time, CESA will make it possible to reduce the environmental impact of every flight by 10%.
We're in the control tower of Brussels Airport. Flight SAS 589 has just appeared on the screens. In fact, it descended from its cruising altitude much earlier over Amsterdam. Scandinavian 589er confirming descent level 340. The optimum thing for us is to um, is to have an, an idle descent all the way to the runway. Uh, I mean, but that is ruined already now. As we descend now, we uh, we can throttle back and thus uh, decreasing the fuel consumption. But as we get down to flight level 330, or as this case 310, we have to throttle up again and increase the fuel consumption. And that's not optimal for us. This SAS flight is obliged to descend in stages while making detours, called step descend, to position itself in the arrival traffic. This kind of descent is longer and more costly in fuel. In the future, thanks to better traffic management, most flights will be able to make continuous descents. The engines will be constantly at low power, thus reducing fuel consumption and its impact 30, on the environment. 20, These procedures are being explored with all the partners of CESAR, including the airlines. CESAR is very important for the airline industry. Uh, the inefficiencies of flying today within Europe are estimated at something around 4 billion euro per year. The uh, total costs are 8 billion, so you can see it's a lot of money. Uh, but also it's important for the passengers because we, we can significantly reduce the delays, especially we need more capacity in the future. In 2007, 77% of short-haul flights were on time. In future, thanks to the modernization of European airspace management, we can expect a punctuality rate at arrival of almost 95%. We are currently developing the technologies and the operational procedures until 2015. This will be followed by the so-called deployment phase, which will deploy the new technologies between 2015 and 2020, 2025. Through the collaboration of all players in the sector, CESAR, the technological component of the single European sky, will support airspace reorganization in line with traffic flows, create more capacity and increase the efficiency of the air traffic management system.